tayo po, dadako na tayo sa pinakamahalatang gawain natin sa Panginoon. Ang makinig at mag-aral po sa ating mga salita ng Panginoon ang nagdagaling sa ating banal na aklat at tinatawagan po natin ang ating kapitan ay kapitid sa kapatid. <laughs> Ang ating kapatid na si Brother Jesus. Amen. Once again, welcome our brothers. We have an international, we have a foreign, foreigners in our church today. So, Listen to the word of God. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Are you ready for the word? Yes. Amen. Okay. Last uh, last Friday, do you remember our message? Last Friday. Who can remember our message? Okay. So nobody remembers. So those who wrote it in their notebooks, even if you cannot remember, but as long as you have written it in your book or somewhere, then you can, you can remember it, because you will read it once again. Because uh, this morning, the message of the Lord that is going to be expounded in our midst is in relation, or the same a verse that I'm going to, to share to you, but we will go deeper. So it is about the shepherd and the sheep. Amen. Amen. So when you speak about shepherd and the sheep, always in our in our mind it will come immediately the Psalms 23, verse 1 to 6. Amen. Amen. So I believe all of you can write the verse Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be one. Okay, so this morning, I will be responding to you from verse 1 to 6. So, our pastor last Friday, he already uncovered something or some portion of the verses. Already removed the, the, the first layer, <laughs> the first wrap, the first wrapping of the, of the message. And I want to go deeper. Because I believe that this morning, God has some new revelations for us. Amen? Amen? So we are after the revelations of God. If you read the verses one, one, one time, you will, you will get some revelation. But if you read it again, same verse, you will get another revelation. Amen. And if you read it, nobody can say that it's already used, that verse is used. No. Because the Word of God is life. It is a God breath. So as long as you receive it in your, in your spirit, in your soul, in the inside of you, there is something will change with us. Amen? Amen? So okay, Jesus, today, Jesus wants you to believe that He loves you. Amen? Not just to know that God loves you, but we have to believe that He loves us. Amen? And God wants us to see Jesus as our shepherd. Amen? He wants us to see Jesus as our shepherd. You know, of all the pictures, of all the pictures of, of God portrayed, you know, frequently portrayed in the, in the Bible, it's that of a shepherd. God in, and God's people, the body of Christ, is that of a flock. Usually, frequently in the Bible, and also, the Bible portrayed God in many ways, like mother eagle, you know, hen, and uh, the chicks. He also the master and the servants. 
Lord of the vineyard and the laborers, the workers. And you can see that the shepherd and the sheep is frequently used both in the Old and New Testament. So that is, there is something that we can, we can learn about being Jesus as our shepherd. And being the sheep, we are a member of the flock of Jesus Christ. Amen. There's something, that there, is a, there are lots of, of things that we can learn about being Jesus as our shepherd. Because you don't need to worry about faith. You don't need to worry about how you, you, you do it when you believe Jesus as our shepherd. Because you have to follow. Because a she shepherd will lead. And the sheep will just follow. Right? So, you know, you don't need to, uh, to check or to see what kind or where, what is the direction that you want to follow. Because you have a shepherd. And the shepherd will bring you to the place that you want you to be. That he wants you to be. Thank you. It's the same in, you know, in, the, in church leadership. It's the same. We have a shepherd. We have a chief shepherd, which is Jesus Christ. And we have the elders as the, sheep, uh, the shepherd for the church. And also we have the deacons as the uh, lower shepherds of the church. And they are scattered, you know, in the congregation to take care of the flock. So God wants us to understand, you know, that God, the idea of the shepherd and the sheep is a very beautiful picture of God taking care of you, taking care of the church, loving the church, and protecting them and keeping them. So that's a very, you know, very nice picture of God. You cannot, uh, you cannot compare the sheep, the sheep, you know. When you, can, when you see sheep in the mountains or in the hill, you will think that somewhere there is a shepherd, right? You will believe that somewhere in the vicinity there is a shepherd. But when you see rats in the farm, so no rats, so see also rats. You know, you know rats? Ilaga ma ilaga. If you, if you see rats in the farm, so you cannot, you cannot compare or you cannot relate the rats to the, to the owner of the farm. That this owner of the farm is uh, taking care of the rats. So, always, when you see a sheep, the flock around the hill, it is related, always related to the shepherd. So, it is something. So, last uh, Friday, our pastor also, he discussed, discussed about goats, goats and sheep, right? So we can see that goat is a very different from sheep. Goats are hard-headed and independent, and they usually go their own way. They are smart, right? Goats are smart, but sheep different. They are usually dumb. They are usually dumb, and goats are smart. So sheep is usually dumb, and they are not proud. The goats are proud. So sino nakita sa inyo ng mga goats? When you decline the, some, somewhere, you will jump, right? You will jump from one rock to another rock. But the sheep, you know, you just... <laughs> so you just... <laughs> like, uh, you know what is dumb? Dumb, like you donkey, the road to dumb. You uh, lick the donkey, you just. So if you hit the donkey many times, the donkey will just, he will not run. Like a horse, if you hit a horse, it will run. But the donkey, if you hit it, it will check you first, and it will walk very, very slow. It's dumb also. Same like the ship. But goats are different. They are very, very smart. They are very, they can transfer from one big stone to another stone and jump from one place to another place. So, sheep, they need shepherds. 
you know, they are done. That's why they need cheaper. So, which of the two do you want? The sheep or the, the goat? So you want the sheep. Because we like the sheep. Why? Because we we rather be down and make the Lord as our shepherd and shall not want all the days of our lives than to be like goats, smart, that one day fell and sleep and die. Smart. Right? So kind of smart on goats. So they, they go their own way, they climb to sleep and they fall down. So what's what, what the use of the smart man? So cheaper is the sheep. They have the attitude of following the shepherd. If, if, if one sheep will go, then he can, he can check the other sheep in another place because he may just be returned to it. Because they like to follow the shepherd. They like to follow the shepherd because they are dumb. They are not smart. Okay? So, in Psalm 23, 1, that's why it says, The Lord is the shepherd, I shall not want. I mean, let's say to be smart, let's say to be, uh, to be like a goat that is smart, to be blessed by God. Because God, or Jesus Christ, has all the smartness, the coolness, all the wisdom. All you need is to follow. All you need is to follow the shepherd. And he will bring you to a place for your own good. Amen? Yeah. Okay. And, you know, the greatest accomplishment of Jesus is being resurrected. Being resurrected from the dead is the, the, the greatest accomplishment of Jesus Christ of all time. Because that, that is the cause or that is the, the reward of our salvation. You know, if Jesus Christ did not resurrect dead from the dead, our faith today is useless. Amen? Useless for you. We will not go to church. It's useless. You look at your God. If my God is dead, what is the use of going to church? So, the greatest accomplishment of Jesus Christ is being resurrected. So, in Hebrews 13 20, after Jesus Christ was resurrected, what is saying? Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. Now, may the God of peace who brought again our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. So there comes again that great shepherd of the sheep. So because of his resurrection, because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, he became the great shepherd of the sheep. So we can say that we have a good shepherd. We can say that our God is alive. Because he resurrected from the dead. You know the picture of healing. When you are sick and you want to be healed. And I believe there are so many people right now who are also sick, not just physically, but also emotionally. You are sick. Materially sick. <laughs> Materially sick. If you, have, if you are in financial trouble, you are financially sick. You are emotionally sick. You know what? The picture of healing is also related to the shepherd and the sheep. I will show you one verse. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. It says, He himself bore our sins. Can you read that, please? Amen. So by the stripes you were healed. So it is related to being the shepherd of God and being the sheep. You know what? When a shepherd, when uh, he in sheep, something is wrong with the sheep. Immediately he will come and take the sheep and uh, put some some busy things in it. Whatever, for example, the leg is broken, he will put some wood and uh, tie it so that the sheep will become well. So that is the, the very work of the shepherd. He will guide the sheep 
along the way, we will guide it to the right way and to the right direction, to the greener pasture. And when, when one sheep is, uh, is uh, hurt, <coughs> he will come and take the sheep and heal it. So Jesus Christ is the same. Because of his stripes, because of the wounds in his body, now we are healed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So healing, healing is so easy when we see Jesus as our keeper. Like in our church, in Eastern Church, we have we have all kinds of sheep. All our sheep, we have, we have all kinds of sheep, all sizes. Some very round, you know. Some are slim, but everybody is cute. Amen. So we are all sheep, and the one shepherd. You know? it's, it's so it's so beautiful to see different kinds of sheep in the church, right? Some tall sheep, some very low sheep, some very round body, very healthy, chubby sheep. So we are all sheep. We are the sheep of God, and Jesus Christ is our shepherd. Amen. We have only one shepherd. We don't have many shepherds, there's only one, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And the leaders of the church, they are the co-shepherds. Cool you know that the uh, shepherd under Christ. Amen. Yeah. So that's why we don't, we don't uh, lift up any, anybody in the church. Like, yeah. we look to him as the number one of the church. No, they're all the same. Yeah. Everybody is, uh, we have the leaders, we have the elders, so we have the members, so we have the musicians. We have everyone and we have all the work. If you are assigned to a certain job in the church, just do your job. Amen. Amen. If you if you if you smile and bless other people, just yes. smile. You know? When you go to church, when you enter the church, just release your smile. <laughs> Use close up. <laughs> or white people. White people. If, you know. So if you if your talent is to clean the chairs and to just uh, arrange you know, arrange the church in a very very straight manner, just do it. Amen. Because if you're faithful with a small thing in the future, God will use you and will will uh, will allow you to be used in bigger things. Yeah. Amen? So, what po kayo mag-alala? Mag because God is looking at your heart. When you when you do your job in church, God will look at your heart. And you will not look to what what you did or how, how you did it. But God looks at your heart. And when God sees your heart, that all you have done for the glory of God, He will reward you. Thank you, Lord. So, thank you for that very long in introduction. <laughs> the main message of this morning is found in Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6. Now, verse 1 and verse 1 to 6. This is the shepherd's song. I know that everybody knows about this verse, and even the unbelievers know about this verse very well. But I believe that God has something to reveal to us this morning in the same verses that we're about to unveil to you. Let's study about the different principles found in Psalm 23, chapter 1 to 6. Verse 1. Can you read it for me? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. Praise the Lord. The word want, in other translation, is lack. In other translation, I shall not lack. So notice that there is no qualification. He said, I shall not lack for what? For peace, for joy, for healing, for provision? No. Full stop. Thou shalt not lack. It means that there is no limit. It is an unlimited provision of time. Thou shalt not want or thou shalt not lack. So, the problem why people are lacking because we don't see Jesus as the shepherd. 
you know, like uh, I told you, some sheep, you know, some goats, they don't have, they don't like shepherds, they go their own way. So they fall to the cliff without the knowledge of the, because there is a shepherd. But the sheep, you know, the sheep, the fold, when they follow the sheep, the shepherd, you will have, you will have enjoyed, you know, everything that the shepherd has wants them to enjoy. Okay, so there is no qualification, so stop, I shall not want. Meaning it is an open provision of God. And you will see the Lord, you know, us Christians, we, we Christians, being born again, we receive the Lord as our Savior, you know. The great, as, as, as I told you before, we receive the Lord, the greatest miracle that has ever happened in your life is to be, to be born again. And we receive the Lord as our, as our Savior. But it doesn't stop there. We must know and we must learn that Jesus is also our shepherd. And some people are lacking because they don't see Jesus as their shepherd. You know, when we see the Lord as our shepherd, we will have a sense of being loved. Right? So you will have a sense of being cared for. You will have a sense of being protected from, from anything. And we will have a sense of security. And we won't feel alone and being left out. So ganun po mga kapatid, when you are, when you see Jesus as your sleeper, it's like when your father is with you. When you're walking in the street, remember when you're a child, when you're a small child, and you, you walk in the street, it's good, you know, it's good to see, or it's good to feel that you have your father and your mother with you, right? Amen. So when you walk, you feel secure. And when, you're, when you go, some, uh, when you, you stray away, then your father will, will show you. Hey, come back. It's too dangerous. Right? So, so your father or your mother will, will guide you. And it's, it's something that you feel secure. You feel secure because of them. So it's the same when you have, when you feel Jesus, when you, when you see Jesus as your keeper, you feel secure. Amen. 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 And you feel you are cared for. Mayroon kang as one. Kahit na pumupunta ka sa ibang lugar, kahit na lumalayo ka na, but you are still thinking that somebody is thinking about you. That there's a super that is taking care of you. Like in the house, like in your home. If, if a child is being loved in the home, if they feel love and being care in the house, so he will not go astray and have some friends with uh, involved with friends and involved with the different, uh, you know, different bad things. When he feels the love in the house, it's the same. So when you feel being loved, it's so difficult to, to go away, right? And you always want to go to your home. But see, those people, those parents who, who just leave their, their children away in the cave, they don't talk to their children, and they just ignore their children, one day the boy will go away and find love with other people. You will find love with the barcada, so you will, you will be involved in, in, you know, in the gang, and you will become we are. But we really feel love in your home, especially those parents who are here in abroad, you know, we are away from our children. Just don't forget to, to remind them. My son, my, my daughter, she good, study hard, I have a gift for you. When you become first owner, I will give you this, I will give you that. So the boy will feel love, even if you are far away, but he's, uh, he still thinks that what, what, one person is the super, his mother or father still taking care of her, right? So, hindi, hindi natin, hindi mawawala sa'yo. Kahit sa kapunta, when you, when you feel being loved by your family, it's so nice to go home when you're being, when you feel being loved. Right? Amen. 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 So, there's a question. 
Does the ship keep the shipper? Or does the shipper keep the ship? Yeah. So the shipper keeps the ship. So in that case, if the shipper keeps the ship, why are we too worried? Bakit tayo masyado nag-worry? Being the ship, being the member of the flock of God, why are we so worried in our lives? We are like goats sometimes. We are very smart and we want to go our own way. But no, we are already a stripper, a member of the flock of God. So don't, don't be stupid. Follow him. Follow the stripper. And you will feel loved, you will feel protected, you will feel secure, and you will, you will feel be cared for. Amen? So in God's principle, the ultimate responsibility of God is to keep His ship well provided. You know, the ultimate, the ultimate the, the purpose, the goal of God is to keep His ship well provided. Since you know, kita ng parents or like uh, simple sa sa atin na pinapabayaan yung pamilya wala di ba? we all want to provide our family so the shepherd also Jesus Christ our God his ultimate goal is to provide for the sheep for the flock of God and he will see to it that the sheep will not lack anything amen so when you are lacking when we are lacking sometimes, it's because we don't see God as our shepherd. Or we forget, we forget to see Him as our shepherd. Amen. Verse 2. Psalm 23, verse 2, it says, Okay. The first thing that the Lord does to you when He provides all your wants, is to make you lie down. The first thing. So you remember that always when I when I preach, I always uh, put some emphasis on rest. Don't be stressed. Just relax and be at rest. So because in Psalm 23, verse two, the first thing that the Lord will do in providing your needs, He will not let you. Go and run and work. No. The first thing that God will do is to make you lie down in green pasture. He will make you lie down. He will not tell you to work, 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 work. No, no, no. Work, work, work. No. Because in the world, the standard of the world is different. When you go to your company and you lie down there, they will fire, fire you out. But the Lord, because He is our shepherd, the first thing that God will do when He provides your needs is to make you lie down in green pasture. Hallelujah! How beautiful! It's a very, it's the very opposite of what the world is doing. The world will tell you to go work. Right now, it's seven and thirty. Go. Take a bath because at 8 in the morning you have to work. Yeah, we have to work because it is our work. We have to go to our office and have to work. But we don't live as per the standard of the world. We live according to the standard of the Bible. Yeah. I'm not telling you that when you go to your office, you have to go there and lie down. No. There's some, some, some principle that we are studying right now. What is the priority? What is your priority? Right now, when God tells you, to lie down, just lie down, just relax. When you are restful and relaxed, the Holy Spirit inside you will tell you what you will do and what step you are going to take. Amen? Amen. So when you are relaxed, in a relaxed attitude, you can hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. It does small, still voice of God, you can hear it. But when you're busy, 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 work, 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 Friday, 
were some people <laughs> no, I'm not telling that so you don't go to your part time. <laughs> but I, I'm telling you right now that when you relax, when you lie down, the Holy Spirit inside you will tell you, wake up. Go somewhere. If somebody is waiting for you there who will give you what you need. Amen. Amen. Sometimes when we, we don't have the money and we have some problems in the in our country, you know the first thing that will come to your mind is who? Who has the money? <laughs> you check the phone book, you know? Okay, I think this guy is well well off in his life. I will call him. So the first thing the first person the first thing that we that we think is who is the person that we will ask for money. We forget, you know, we forget that the first thing that we are going to ask is our shepherd. Jesus. Lord give me the wisdom. Give me the the direction. You know, there is one sister. His name is uh, her name is Sister Rose. She has a, she has a part time, and uh, when they call the, the girl, you know, the person whom they will work, the the number, the mobile number that that he provided, that she provided was uh, lacking one number. It's not complete, so they cannot contact that person. And they have no choice but to go to the church. So when they arrive to the church, so they have there in the part time they will they will earn at least two hundred dollars. But the Lord, by the generosity of the church members, God provided her five hundred for one Friday. Because she chose to stay in the church. Amen. It's, it's a blessing when you when you know how to choose, when you know how to decide how to follow your shepherd. He will lead you to the green pasture. And there's no struggle. The very, very thing is there's no struggle. Why? Because somebody will provide for you. Because the Lord will provide it for you. There's no struggle. So when you go to work, when you go to your part time, you have to work, 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 clean this, clean all the tables, clean all the cabinets, clean all the jars, everything clean. After that, the boss will give you the money, right? Because you have worked for it, but when God provides, whoo, it's so nice. Because God will just allow you to rest, enjoy His presence, enjoy the praise and worship, enjoy the Word of God, and after the church, somebody will give you 500 more than three times. Amen. What you expect outside more than three times, He will provide it for you. So choose now what to do. Are you going to part time? When the Holy Spirit tell you to go, go. Maybe that is the provision of God for you. I'm not telling you that part time is bad. No, just listen. Lie down. I'm going to part time today because the Holy Spirit told me to go, so I'm going. But don't go on Friday, please. Because when you when you do, when you think that I to speak of God first, what he says, all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. So don't worry, all these things shall be added unto you. It's right to say, all these things shall be added unto you. Okay, to lie down. And you know what? Mary, there are two sisters. The another sister is Mary and the other is Martha. So what Martha is doing, she's doing she's so busy, 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 preparing for the visitors, preparing because Jesus Christ went to her house and he's busy preparing for the food, for everything busy, busy. And he told Jesus, Jesus, will you allow Mary to sit in front of you and just listen to you? Why? Command her to help me. So the two people was being 
because Jesus Christ and made it. So what you know what? I must have been in Jesus Christ. What what Jesus Christ told Martha? Luke ten yes. forty one. What he said? What she said? Luke ten forty one. And Jesus Amen. Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. What is that one thing? And Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from here. What is that one thing? To be in the presence of Jesus. Amen. That is one thing. Forget other things. Forget, forget the food. Forget everything. The food will just follow. Amen? After the church, the food will just follow. When you, when you concentrate on Jesus, you have that one thing. The only one thing, the only thing that the Lord is asking you is to be in His presence and to behold His beauty. Yes. Amen. So what He said, what He said, so, so Martha said, okay, so they sat down together. So God wants us to lie down in green pastures. What is green pastures? It means abundance of food. Abundance of spiritual food. Green symbolizes new grass. Right? When you see the hill, it is green. Check it once again. If it is green, it is new. New grass. Not all. If you see brown, it is old. So it is dry. It is old. It is dry. It is brown. But when you see green, it means fresh. So, God wants us to lie down and eat green grass. What it means? He means it means that God wants us to eat new revelations from God. The abundance of spiritual food. The abundance of spiritual food from God that, is, that He wants us to eat. And especially in the new covenant. The covenant of grace. We have to see to it that we receive food from the new grass, which is the covenant, the new revelation in the new covenant, the covenant of grace. Now, he led me beside the still waters. So still waters, still, it means it is slow and still. It does not mean, it, it does not mean that it, it is stagnant, no? It is not meant like that. Because if it is stagnant, it is a breeding pool of the mosquitoes and of the insects. It means that the stillness and the quietness of the Holy Spirit in you, in me, present in your life, this is related to the stillness. You know, sometimes God is telling us, be still and know that I am God. Yes. Just be still. So when you, when, when God led you to, to be still, still water, so just be still. You know, this is related in your decision making. If your spirit is troubled in that decision, if, if the spirit is troubled, you know, when you are making some decisions, so many people are not going to make decisions in your life. When it is troubled, when it is, there are many problems that are coming to the decision, don't go for it. If your spirit is troubled, but when your spirit is quiet, when, you, when there is peace, when there is joy in that decision, Go for it. Amen. It is the will of God. Praise the Lord. So still words. This is also related to the storms of life. God will, God will lead you out of the storm into a still water. The song says, you know, there's a song. Sabina, when the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood, and I will be still and know you are God. What is the title of the song? So that's why that song was written for us to be still. 
Rabia Kataniya, I know we are seeing it right here in our church. Where the oceans rise and turn, there's no fear. I will story you as I explore. Father, you are king of love and just love. I will be king of you. To God will lead you out of the from the sorrows of life, and He will lead you beside the still waters. And there is quietness, there is peace. You know, there is one portrait. You know, uh, this one story, uh, a portrait. The theme of the painting is peace. So some people like this. So some people they painted a very very peaceful environment. So one painting is a silent light, uh, silent light painting with the moon and with uh, dim shadow. So that is the piece that is that is uh, for this that he portrayed in the painting. So another one he painted a very 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 beautiful uh, sunrise with birds flying in the sky so this is peace but another guy he painted a storm there's a storm in the beside the, the and, and uh, in the shore you know there's one rock and there's one bird a small bird you know bird eagle with uh, uh, we just sitting behind the rock and the bird is very very safe. So what 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 what, what I'm telling you is peace is not in the absence of storm. It is when you are the in the storm that you are peaceful. You know Jesus when <laughs> with the people in the boat with their uh, with their on board in the boat and all the disciples are crying, Ah, we'll die, we'll die. And Jesus Christ is sleeping. sleeping. Jesus Christ is sleeping. And all the people with him, they're all panicked. They panic. They don't know what to do because they see the storm around them. And Jesus Christ is sleeping. How come? <laughs> How come this Jesus is sleeping while we are in the storm? And all the disciples said, we came up. <laughs> so they look up Jesus. And Jesus told his peace. And all the, the ocean, the sea, became still. Because Jesus is the master of the soul. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, whenever you are, even if you are in the storm, when you are with the shepherd, when you are with Jesus, you will feel Say, because he is with you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. He will, he will leave you beside the still waters. You can drink the still waters. You will enjoy the still waters. Verse 3. Psalm 23, verse 3. Please read it for me. Oh, yung sabay -sabay okay. One more time. Go. Yes. 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 You know what? High blood pressure is because of stress. That you are going up is because of stress. It's because of many, many problems in your life. Amen. But when you, when you, when God restores your soul, He will restore your life. Amen. Amen. Some people are dead. Like we are, we are living, but we are dead. We are like zombies. Why? Because you don't feel the light. 
like time ganun, when we are we are living like when you have lots of troubles in your life, maybe your your life will become dead. But when God restores your soul, He will restore life into you. He will, He will restore your emotions. He will restore your body, and He will bring back life into you. He restores your soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. This is very, very nice. Leading me in the path of righteousness, what does it mean? It means that, I, will, I have a very good example. In Israel, there's a hill. There are hill. Because you see lots of, lots of sheep in Israel. When you go to Israel, well, even here, you cannot see, because there's no hill. All desert. <laughs> so in Israel, they have, they have rain, they have flat, that's everything. So they have green grass, they have hills. And in the hill, when the ship is in the hill, they will not eat like this. If, it's, if this is the hill, the ship will not eat like this. No. The ship will eat like this. So when you see in the top, there's a trail. There's a path. That, the path this path is leading to the top. So the hand that for you to know kind, see the soon as you trail that you're uh, following that path. They call it the path of righteousness. And God will lead you to it, the path of righteousness. So when you when you follow the path of righteousness, God will lead you to the top. He will lead you to the top. Because the end portion of that path, that rail, is on top. So he leads you into the path of righteousness. John 10.10 it says, Wala ko, wala ko dyan. Sabi niya, the thief cometh to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. So when God is leading you, just follow Him. He will lead you into the path of righteousness. So when you speak of righteousness, I am righteous. I am, I am holy because I did not sin. No. You have seen, I know. But righteousness cannot be earned, cannot be, cannot be, or cannot be bought. It is a gift from God. So when you follow righteousness, God will lead you to the path of righteousness. God will lead you to holiness. So that will manifest in your life. In your life. Amen? So, it's so nice that God will just lead you to it. He will not do it, but He will lead you to it. Amen. So don't, don't struggle to, I will become righteous. I will become, I will become. Then you fall again. When you go from your house, I promise. Just like boys, you know, when you, when you go from your house, you know, I will not last today. I will not look for any woman. I will not last. So, 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 Psalm 53, 4. Did you say for that thing? Psalm 53, 4. Yes, no, I walk with the body of the Lord. 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 You are united. <laughs> okay, once again. So I walk in the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear the evil, for thou art with me. Thy right and thy stop because of me. So, in the first three verses, in the first three verses of Kanina, that He, He leadeth me beside the still waters, He restores my soul, He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. He, He, is in the third person. You know what? Third person is He. First person is me. When I talk to you, you are the second person. I mean, we, I tell She or He, so it's in the third person. So, David is talking about the third person. 
he leads me, he sees the prayer to God. He leads me, he beside the still water, he restores my soul, he leads me the path of righteousness. But, in verse 4 he says, And though I walk through the body of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. He read for God in the second person. Very, very personal. For you are with me. So now he's talking to God in a very personal way. So, so yes, though I walk, it means though though I walk, it means you don't have you don't have to you don't have to walk. But because some some sheep are very smart, I want to try this new shortcut. Uh, we have a lot of ideas. So when you have some small ideas, you have. I have to try this new shortcut, so I'll go down the hill immediately, uh, so you don't follow the shepherd anymore. So you find yourself, you found yourself in the valley of the shadow of death. Because of disobedience, because of your own smartness, you found yourself in the shadow of the valley, in the valley of the shadow of death. So even if, even if, having a even if you do it, even if it is in your own doing, sabi niya, even if, sabi niya, though I walk to the body of the Son of I will pray to God, for thou art with me. Immediately, He is with you. You don't need to shout and, ah, no, no, thou art with me. In the shadow of the valley of death. No, in the valley of the shadow of death. So, it doesn't mean that when you go astray, the shepherd will let you go and allow you to die in the shadow. But you know what, church? Nobody will die through the shadow. The shadow of a sword cannot kill you. So when the sword is here, the shadow is there, and the shadow hits you, it will not kill you. Amen? Amen? Amen. When a lion, when a lion attacks with a shadow, what happens? <laughs> Nothing. Pag ikaw ay sinampan ng shadow, wala mangyayari sa'yo. Because shadow cannot kill you. Cannot hurt you. The only people who will die with the shadow, or be afraid with the shadow, are the children. See yung bata, the shadow, small child, like two years old, then you, uh, that boy, you'll see the shadow, you'll make some snake news. <laughs> You will pray. You will be afraid with the child of your children. But we, we as mature Christians, we don't fear shadows. When somebody is after you, shadow, don't be afraid. Pero pang isa, sabi niya, in, in verse, merong, uh, merong verse sa Bible that Satan is like a Rolling lion, seeking whom he may devour. Okay? So, if you see the National Geography or Discovery Channel, when a lion wants to, to kill or to eat something, he will not roar. To the, the prey, you know, he will go. So, the lion who wants to eat will be. Very, very slow, very, very silent, and immediately will fear. But Satan is different. He will roar. Ah! So the the angry, uh, the Christian or we, ah! <laughs> he died because of the noise. Actually, he cannot devour you. He cannot devour you. You know, seeking whom he may devour. Seeking whom he may devour. So meaning that there are people who are undevourable by Satan. So may mga tao na pwedeng i-devour. Devour with, with noise. He will roar and he will devour you with the noise. So other Christians die with the noise. With the, with the noise of Satan, of the, of the morning lion. So let's continue. So notice that when, when I walk in the shadow of death, you are with me. He is with you. 
It means that He found you. The shepherd found you. Tingnan niyo ang verse. I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Though I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. You are not alone. When you go to the shadows of death, the shepherd is with you. You are not alone. And the shepherd will find you. If God will not find you, you can never find him. Because you know, some, some, some sheep he will not say that, okay, I have still 99. Let, let it be, let it go. Another sheep, let it go. The only one sheep. As sabi ng Bible, even if the 99, he will leave the 99 and he will search for the one. So yes. that, that is our shepherd. Yes. Ganun po niya tayo mahal. That's how he loves us. So it's the one who will go out and look for the missing sheep. Some people will say, like, uh, uh, it's an old believer, born again in the last 20 years, he will say, in the year 1984, I found the Lord. Uh, no, my friend, God find you. Amen? So he find you. God wasn't Lord. You are Lord. So God find you. So when you walk in the shadow, in the valley, the shadow of this, God will find you there, and He is with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. So when the ship is sick, what we will do? We will help them. We don't beat them, but we treat them and feed them. So even in, even in, our, in our leadership, great leaders are mostly shepherds, like Moses. Moses is a shepherd. Before God called him for a bigger ministry, he was a shepherd. By his, uh, by his uh, father, Jethro, in the Midian, you know, in the mountain of the Midian. And Moses also is a shepherd, and Joseph also is a shepherd, and David is also a shepherd. David also was a sheep. So, before you can be a shepherd, you need to be a sheep. Yeah. Why David is a sheep? He wrote Psalm 23 one. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not mind. It means that he is a sheep. So David became a king in Israel. Why? Because he has a good sheep. And God used him to become the shepherd of Israel. So in leadership it's the same. When you are a good sheep and you follow the shepherd in the church, one day you will become a shepherd. Amen? Praise the Lord. Psalm 23, 5, two verses more and we'll stop. Psalm 23, 5, it says, Thou prepare the table before me, the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my God arises over Amen. So, this verse is very, you cannot understand it by our mind. You can understand it by our heart. So, we want, we want, all, all of us, we want to eat in the absence of our enemies. Who can eat in the presence of your enemies? Kung nasa harap ko yung kalaban mo, kumakaid ka sa harap mo, kakaid ka ba na maayos? Nagnanalit? No, you cannot eat in the presence of your enemies. Especially yung kalaban mo talaga. When you hate, when you hate a person, it's hard to eat in front of him. I cannot imagine one group hitting another group that will eat together. I don't know. Walang tain, siguro, away na. So, we all want to enjoy God's work in the absence of our trials and suffering. It's the same. And it is true. It is human. That is human. But in this verse, God wants you to eat while the enemies are staring at you. While the enemy is looking at you, God wants you to eat and enjoy the food. God wants you to enjoy His Word in the presence of trials and suffering. Amen! Praise the Lord! In the Old Testament, when David, when the king of Israel, when they conquer, conquer another king, you know what they do? They tie the captives. You know, if they can't captive the king, the soldiers, the generals, 
you know what they what they're doing? They are hanging them in the walls of the big like uh, big uh, uh, platform. Do nila po nilalagay yung mga generals at sa yung king. They are in shackles, in chains. So the sa tagit na po niyan may mga food. That there's food. And what you know, yung mga ano yung mga yung mga sila king David and all the generals they will eat in the presence of their enemies. That's true. They cannot they can shout what they want. They can they can scream, but they cannot touch you. The enemy, the devil, is only defined by the blood of Jesus Christ. He cannot touch you. He can stare at you, he can shout at you, he can roar like a lion, but he cannot touch you. You can God because God allow you to eat in the presence of your enemies. Amen? God will allow you to eat in the presence of your enemies. They can shout what they want. They can, they can, they can roar like lions, but they can never touch you. Never. And He says, "You anointed my head with oil, with my cup." What is what is what does this mean? It means that the Holy Spirit will be the anointing of God. So when God, with the shepherd, anointed you with oil, your cup runs over. What means your joy is overwhelming in your heart. Amen. So you feel it, you will feel it. I believe when God cares for you, when you feel the care of our God or our shepherd, you will really feel the joy. Especially when you are hurting, when you are discouraged, and God rescues you, ba? Napaganda po yung feeling mo. You will feel very, very high in God because you are filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Lastly, I'm not going to close by this verse. <laughs> so, blessings will follow you. Psalm 23 6. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. Surely, be sure. Not perhaps, not maybe. This is sure. This is something sure. Hindi sinabi dito na maybe. <laughs> Goodness and mercy shall follow me. No. Surely. This is assurance. That, sabi niya, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Goodness and mercy shall follow you. Follow means hunt you down. If you follow someone, you're hunting him down. When one when one guy is, is following a girl, he is hunting down the girl. It's the same when you follow the shepherd. Grace and your mercy, goodness and mercy will follow you. So when you follow, mercy and uh, goodness and mercy will follow you. It means that you are following someone. You are following something, and because you are following something, goodness and mercy will follow you. So when you turn back to that someone, to that something, and follow goodness and mercy, it will run away. But when you follow him, who is he? Jesus, our shepherd, when you follow him, goodness and mercy will follow you. Amen? Amen. So that's Just follow him, the shepherd. Just follow him, and goodness and mercy will follow you. Then the goodness and mercy will slap you. To slap you in the back, how good it is. Yeah. <laughs> Very merciful. I am not hurt. I enjoy it because that is goodness and mercy is following you. Because you are following someone. You are following the shepherd. Praise the Lord. So the revelation that I'm going to close this. Keep goodness and mercy behind you. It means follow the one in front of you. Do not follow goodness and mercy. Follow the one that is in front of you. What is the secret? Last two verses, John 10, 4. And when he puts for his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, who they know his voice. It is Jesus. It is Jesus, our shepherd. As long as you put Jesus in front of you, Goodness and mercy will follow you. Keep following Jesus. These things will follow you. You don't turn your back on Jesus, but follow Him. 
and goodness and mercy will follow me. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. How good it is to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The same can be found in Psalm 27.4. Last verse. Tingnan ko natin. Psalm 27.4. One thing. Praise the Lord. What is the secret? To behold the beauty of the Lord and inquire in His temple. Just desire the beauty of the Lord. Just follow Him. Just put it, put God in your front. When He goes, the sheep will follow Him. Don't turn back your, your direction. Don't go left, right, back, no. Just follow Him. Desire the beauty of the Lord. And inquire, what, is, what, we, what it means by inquire? Visit His temple. Where is the temple? The church. Inquire in His temple. Inquire in the church. Be participated in the church. And you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Praise the Lord. Let's give God a clap of praise. Let's all stand. All stand. Hallelujah. And I want to give the time for our pastor, Pastor Ernie, to give us a word to encourage us more. Hallelujah. Tayo po ay nalapin na tayo at napakaganda po ng mensahe. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for your guidance. For your word, Panginoon. Salamat, Panginoon, sa oras na ito na muli, Panginoon. Na kayo nga po yung Diyos na aming pinangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangangang
Salamat sa lahat Panginoon. Maging sa mga nangyayahan sa aming mga buhay, maging sa karugan. Nararanasan namin ang iyong kawalan, pero nariliyang kayo, Panginoon. Nariliyang kayo pa ng lugar na hindi nawawaglit ang iyong mga mata, Panginoon, sa aming puso ng isipan. At salamat sa mga nito. Salamat sa iyong presensya sa isa itong Espiritu, Panginoon. Ngayong regalo sa amin, Panginoon, na siya itong nagpapaalaala at tuturo sa amin at nagkakabahin sa lahat ng bagay, Panginoon. Nakasihama namin ang pagpakailan mo. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa comfort. Salamat sa kalakasan, sa kapayapaan ng atin ng Diyos. At salamat sa lahat sa mga bagong kapahayag na namin kung narinig mo lahat sa isa. At maraming salamat din sa lahat ng ginamit, Panginoon. At salamat sa buhay niya. Patuloy mo siyang gamitin na tilang Diyos. Sa mga tupa mo, Panginoon, kinawan, upang kami makalakad na ngayon sa iyong kalungan. Salamat po sa mga Ibayong kalakasan naman ang Panginoon ang Anya at Aglay. Dahil ang mga papapalang espirituan, Panginoon, kaya ito ang tinanggap sa oras sa ito. At kayo po, Panginoon, ang siya at mag-iingat nito sa aming mga puso. At ang kapangyarihan mo, Panginoon, ang pinangkalob sa amin, ang siya magtutulang upang magawa namin lahat na bilang Diyos. Ay mga salita namin ang pangyarihan. We thank you Lord for this poor journey to us. At marami pong salamat sa Lord. Tulay nga papuri pong salamat. Tanging sa iyo po namin sa kapalit. At aming pangalam po ng aming pangiso. Salamat po ng Lord. Ay pagsabi namin. Amen. 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 Amen.